All right, we're here with Chris Galloway, and this is the, why don't you tell us a little bit what, what it's called, what it is, and all that, Chris. Well, what we've done is created, as you can see here, it's, it's called a Cedar Bark Wiki Up. And it's fashioned after the Miwok Indians that locally lived in the area. Uh, a lot of cedars in the area, so they use the bark itself as the covering for the outside, which is, the te it's shaped like a teepee. So there's ridge poles that have been put together like, like a teepee. So like a so like a standard teepee. Like a standard teepee, and then we just cover the entire outside with the cedar bark because it's very waterproof, and it deflects the rain, and the snow, and it's the insulation properties of the bark are very high. So it stops the wind. We've locked in the rocks underneath the base of it here. Okay, we're zooming in on that. As you can see down here, what that does is it stops the cold air from the ground coming up into the hut through some of the holes that may be. And then it locks down the bark so the bark does not want to slide around or fall off. And at the same time, it starts to build enough rock so it uh, insulates the bottom where we may have missed it with the bark and it cuts off all of the drafts for us. Okay, now this uh, framing, the framing coming outside here, the door here, what's this? That is the entrance, which we haven't completed yet. Uh, what that would do is give us an area that we can walk in and out of the hut and it cuts down the amount of open space of the front of the hut where you entrance, where you go through right here. So essentially keeping any weather out of this doorway here and making it hard, more difficult for the weather to actually get to you. Exactly. And what we would do is cover this. This is basically what the wiki up frame looked like, sticks basically. And we will lay the bark up against this on both sides and that will give us uh, insulation from the entrance and we'll hang some type of fabric or, or some canvas or buckskin from this entrance which will deflect the breeze coming in and we'll also hang one at this entrance so that gives us an area, a little vestibule outside of the entrance to warm the uh, air up before it enters our wiki up. And at the same time what we'll do is we'll put the bark on the outside and kick the bottom out just a little bit giving a space that's really not usable for people, you can't walk under there, but we can use it as a storage area. So what we'll do oh, is... Oh, say for maybe wood or something? We'll cut some wood and lay some firewood down in here. So during inclement weather, we, won't never, we will never have to leave the hut. We'll just come to the vestibule area, grab the wood that we need, and bring it back to the fire that'll be inside. Now I notice inside, it's not standard... It's not, the, it's not this outside ground that we have out here. You have like a border with some, is that rocks? What is that in there? What we put down here actually is pea gravel, if you can see. Not typically what the natives would have used, but we use the pea gravel because it creates a nice floor. The pea gravel stays cool. It keeps us, us up off the ground. That way we're not laying in dirt. It keeps the inside of the hut clean. And when rain does hit, what rain goes underneath the hut will actually flow underneath the rocks and will be above the water and still be dry. Oh, okay, okay. It really cuts down the amount of dirt when you stomp around inside the hut. And at the same time, if we were to use uh, forest debris to fill the inside of the wiki up, it, we, chances are, and nine times out of 10, that brings the animals in as well and they wind up making nest and burrows in the bottom of your hut, which we don't want. So the spiders, the bugs, they can't burrow and make, make uh, nests and areas within the rock itself, so it helps keep it a little more insect free. And you said ultimately you'll have a fire pit once you're all done here? Well, what we'll do, we'll actually use a metal or a tin dish. In fact, I have the dish over here right now, so we don't create a bunch of charcoal in the base of our Oh, it's not hut. very big, is it? No. Just enough. It doesn't take much fire, but it'll completely warm the inside of the hut, so even during snow or rainy weather, this would be the place to be. We'll place it in the middle, and this will help collect the ash and the charcoal from our fire so we don't create a, a hazard inside. Now, ordinarily, I've seen you now, right now you're using this, this, uh, this 
certain kind of rope you have here, but ordinarily I've seen you use before the uh, this this right here. Yes, tell us about this. Well, that's the inner bark of the cedar tree. And now what we've used is jute string, which is another natural fiber, but we didn't create the natural fiber. But this is this stuff here in your hand is the natural fiber this and This is a great natural fiber. We can use this. And what do you call it when you're making it? This is cedar. And from this, we would strip it down and turn it into cordage. Cordage, okay, that's it. Which is another name for string. Okay. And to do so, we would break into long strips, and we would separate it and create two bundles. Two bundles, and then we would separate that. We would kind of rough it up, run our knife on it to separate the individual strands So that loosens it up and gets the fibers, the other material off and just leaves the fibers, which you can see here. And from that point, I would use what's called a reverse wrap. And that's generally the method that they would use to make cordage. And to do so, you would basically take the cordage in separate hands or in one hand for some people. You, what you do is you twist each strand the same direction and then we wrap it the opposite direction so, so it's almost like a braid quickly I could go ahead and it's almost like a braid it is you can put your finger right there I'll hold it a little farther up so what we're gonna do let me loosen this up see I'm separating the fibers within the cordage itself to make it easier for me to give it the reverse wrap See, I start off with two separate strands. Right. In between my pointer finger and my thumb, I'm going to rotate the cordage to my left. And in that process, I bring my pointer finger up between the two cordage, two strands, and I take both, hold both strands, and twist both strands to my right. Twist to the left, then spin to the right. And I'll speed the process up. You don't need to over twist. You just want to keep, put enough of a twist within each of the strands so that they're braiding up and tightening, strengthening on itself. Then as I grab it, I'm gonna twist it the opposite way. And what that does is lock the strands together so when I let go, it doesn't untwine. So I will go ahead and quickly strand together. And as you do this, periodically run your finger down so you can separate the line beneath right. because it will so it's rat's not nest up. Nodding. Yes, completely. And they do this for everything. All the cordage that the natives use from one form or another whether it be the cedar bark we're using now, dog bane, Indian hemp, stinging nettle. There are many different types. Milkweed, many different types of plants. And the easiest way to, to check to see if a plant is cordage material is simply grab the plant and try and pull it apart. Often when you try to do that, if it's cordage material, it'll be hard to pull apart and you'll see a lot of individual strands underneath the bark. That will tell you those individual strands are what you're going to use to make cordage. Which basically in the short amount of time that we've been here sitting here talking, we have turned that cedar, what once was a simple bark, into cordage that is 100% usable, pliable, I can tie it, I can do all sorts of things with it. And if we were to keep going, we would splice once we run out. We would simply take another piece of bark. We would fluff it up like we did originally. Lay that as we got to the end, lay that in the strand and keep reverse wrapping and just keep extending each of our sections to make a longer and longer piece of cordage. You can use this for snare traps, all sorts of things. Whether awesome. they're broke. We can edit that one out. Fishing well. line. Fishing line, all sorts.
but well, it's you can good. hear you can hear the durability. Yeah, it's very well. That was just okay. Kind of so weak point. this is the you still got work to do. So we're gonna come back and get another come little we're go come back and check trash. it out. But let's go inside here. Get a little check out. Hey, they're ready to go, guys. This is the inside. Okay.